silly characters. Ha ha ha, silly, silly. Who are no joke. I actually love this title because that's one of my favorite genders of villains. I love when you have a villain that's just kind of a goofball, but then you realize that there's such a dark underbelly to that character. And of course, the first one that comes to mind is the man, the legend, the boy, the king, the god, Sans from Undertale. The fact that he's such a goofy meme character for so long, and then all of a sudden, he is literally one of the darkest and most terrifyingly well-written characters in any video game I've ever played. So, the silly characters who are no joke thing is like my favorite thing ever. I, I love it so much. So, Rad Chad made this video, so we're gonna jump right into it. We're gonna see what we got here. I love silly characters. They're silly. They make me laugh. They're goofy. They're silly. They make me cry sometimes, which is even crazier. Funny. What <laughs> does it mean to I'll t you know be funny? Ah, uh, easy. I got you, bro. Rad Chad, I got you, homie. All right, Chad, I'm gonna tell you a joke. I'm only gonna do one word. I can make you laugh with a single word. One single word will contain the setup as well as the punchline of the joke. Women. <laughs> oh, I just, every time, I just kill every time. I can't, oh, oh. Uh. Being funny is as a hold as humanity itself. True. The first joke ever recorded was by the ancient Egyptians yeah. in hieroglyphics. True, true, when they put emojis in the mural of King Tutankhamen, right? I remember that, that was wild. A man with a crocodile head asks a man with a cat head what happened to the 100 pound pharaoh, to which the man with the cat head responded with a racial slur. True, peak comedy has been achieved. Let's freaking go, Egyptians. You guys were so cool when you weren't enslaving Jews. This went on to inspire the funniest people on the internet. I know this may seem shocking to some of them. Great intro to the video, Mr. Rad Chat. I've never seen one of your videos before, but mwah, that was a beautiful way to start your video. You a generation, what with Marvel movies being so popular, but it is possible for characters in media yes. to be funny. These I know, true, real. Characters are often called comic relief. Right. They are funny guys or gals who do silly activities. Yeah, which that aren't necessarily no joke. Ask you to either giggle or chuckle at the occurrences. Maybe even goof or gaff. Some people would argue that I am a comic relief character to their daily lives. But to that I say that is not true because would you be giving your money, supporting, donating to a comic relief character? Would you really be subscribing to me on Patreon, pledging money to me every month? Would you really be subscribing to my Twitch as well as leaving a like on my video if I was a mere comic relief? Merely someone to laugh or gaff at? For the audience, they are a light-hearted relief from Sirius McCuckface, the protagonist. Oh, that's Sneeko. That's his, uh, his anime name and his rival, No Nonsense, McBallnuts. You can tell, I myself am a bit of a comic relief in I your tell. miserable life. I was laughing at that whole time. Since these silly characters are there to contrast the more serious elements, they are commonly unimposing. We Wait, what? You're gonna show Kyube? Eek, and in need of defending by the more epic main characters. This is probably one of the most common tropes in media to the point where you don't bat a single eye at its inclusion. True, the every show has a comic relief. Comic relief is there as a bard for the main character, cracking jokes and singing his praises, but but what if those we least suspect- Monkeys! Look at this funny guy! <laughs> it's just monkey a monkey! Buddy. It's just do, a do monkey! Mon you think it's just a monkey, and then he starts a YouTube channel. He starts voice acting. Little do you know it, it's Sea Dog VA in the flesh! Alright, I'm sorry, that was too dark to- Monkey thing, monkey! Travis was an animal actor who appeared on television shows and commercials. Travis flew into a rage and attacked her. She would be disfigured beyond recognition. We're the ones we should be the most cautious of. If the quietest people shit the loudest, mm -hmm. then it isn't so much of a logical leap that the loudest people shit, shit the, quietest. the quietest. Yo, he's so real for that. Honestly, great intro to the video. I'm not even gonna lie, Mr. Rad Chad, you sold me on your entire channel in the last minute and 50 seconds. Well, 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 look who is. It's I heard you the guy. type to not like or subscribe to Rad Chad. And honestly, I just did your call of action for you, Rad Chad. I got you home, dog. Now, subscribe to me. 
and leave likes on me at youtube.com. It would be a damn shame if I had to do something to this Rousey PNG. Because someone well, be doesn't like and subscribe to Rad Chat that on would YouTube. Suck, I would hate I'm that. sure Rousey PNG will have. This is the longest call to action I've ever seen in my life. A good, safe home to stay at if someone, a certain someone, considered crazy. giving some money on the Patreon. Ooh. If you want the Rousey PNG to survive, you. If you what is even going on right now? I've seen so much Rousey porn. I I'm just not used to seeing him not porn. Oh, you you know what you need to do? Fucking you fuck off. I created you. Yo, true spot, my boy, guy from the Spider Verse. Originally just a silly boy, just a funny, silly, funny, silly, goofy guy. J just your average goofy goober. Just a man that'll make you chuckle. Just your goofball side villain of the week. And you created me. Spider-Man, kill him and his family. The spot. <laughs> oh, what, what did he just say? To be honest, I don't actually know much about this guy. This is the part where a weaker, inferior video essayist would do research on the character. However, I, a true Chad, yes, can't be- You don't need to do research if you watch the movie. He could be in- uh, enclosed in the universe of that movie. That's the beauty of it, ladies and gentlemen. That is the beauty of it. I'm with you 100%. I love making videos without researching the source material just to piss off people and nerds in the comment section. But you didn't actually know this from the source material. It actually confirmed. It doesn't matter because he's the character for the movie that you watch. Very based of you, Rad Chat. I do the same thing. People hate it. They comment. They drive people to argue in your comment section. You get more engagement. Promotes your videos more. Honestly. I was the silly character that was no joke all along. Sometimes I'll even specifically mispronounce words in my videos to piss off people in my audience. I am literally that until the jaunt. Fucked. And also these videos can barely be called video essays. The scripts are bullet points and my source is a vision in my dreams. But I will justify my laziness with intelligence. The creators Bro. of Spider-Verse chose this spot as- Does he not have saggy tits? Like- Am I- I'm not the only one that says that Spoot has saggy tits? Like, let's be real here. The main villain because of two factors. The first one being his nicheness. The fact he's a pretty forgettable villain. So he even had saggy tits in the originals, honestly. So in this regard, we not knowing much about him, other than he is a villain in the Spider-Man universe, is enough. The second True. reason they chose this spot is the fact that his power is actually terrifying. In Across yeah. the Spider-Verse, literal Eldritchian god over here. The spot is represented as a hopeless character. We are introduced to him during his failed attempt at a robbery. Not only do characters downplay him like Miles Morales, but even the universe itself. <laughs> I love that scene with the bread. Self. His backstory entirely yeah. hinges on a background gag where he gets hit by a bagel. Bro, literally, they goofed him so, so hard. The diegetic of the movie, he is as ignored as his comic counterpart is by general audiences. His design even looks dopey. They really gave him saggy tits and a dad bod. Sporting an unflattering physique. But even then, you may notice in his first fight with Miles that he holds up surprisingly well. This is... I mean holds up okay. I feel like he was tripping through his gimmick portals the same way Miles was. That's exactly why it was funny. It was because he was just like accidentally not getting caught. Seemingly the first fight he's in, he's completely improvising it, and he even hits himself with his own attacks. But despite being a dweeb nerd with no funny capabilities and no mastery of his power, he comes toe to toe with Miles for a concerningly long amount of time. This downplaying continues for a while yeah. where the characters see the spot. Until it happens a than a threat you see the spot is honestly so true i i love how in the movie itself they really made everything else going on be the focus like even when he was fighting spot it was so much more about his dynamic with his father than actually fighting spot like when they went to the other universe and they wanted to save all the bridge from collapsing and shit ultimately it really looked like that was the main threat and not spot guy was in the background the whole time he was goofy and Always embarrassed with such a lame backstory. He called Spider-Man his nemesis, and Spider-Man was like, who? Spider-Verse is treated like a joke, so that both you and the characters underestimate him. The only reason the main characters haven't lost yet is because the spot as a person is a joke. But even if you hand the most incompetent person a gun, when they learn to aim and shoot, 
they become deadly. They True, like a raccoon! Eventually the spot does get an understanding of his power and single-handedly takes on four spider people at once. And by the time he attains his full potential, he's been so ignored and downplayed that his ire manifests as a malformed creature bent on causing as much Yes! And what's also so crazy is he looks so menacing, full right? Potential. He went from such a goofy so writing to this scene. Like, could you imagine making that twist from the complete goofball character? And and of course, you could see the character development, how it got here. Nord and downplayed. Like, he and is a horrifying creature. This scene I is horrifying. This is everything that we've ignored has become not just a threat, but has become a life-altering, dimension-crushing threat. As a malformed creature bent on core. Bro! Before, his dad bod was just kind of goofy. Now, his dad bod just makes him look like some kind of Lovecraftian entity. Causing as much havoc as possible. The spot perfectly represents how you can subvert a joke character. Underestimation. Yeah, dude. Spoot, honestly, is one of the craziest villains introduced in a superhero movie. Honestly. Most superhero movies are so by the book. Like, you know exactly... How it starts, how it ends, you know who the main bad guy's gonna be, you know who the twist villain's gonna be. Dude, when Osborne came out of out of Spider-Man's asshole in No Way Home or whatever, and he was like, Oh guys, I was at you thought the goblin was dead. I was the goblin all along. Was anyone surprised? You got bamboozled. Yo, is that a mirage from Apex, huh? Murang is my main. Yo! He mispronounced the name just like me to get people to get pissed off in the comments. No way! What? Legends. Meaning, sorry, you're not allowed to play him. Mirage is the class clown of Apex Legends. Wise and cracked. Isn't sneaky your specialty? And generally Damn. being a silly boy. That's crazy! We're doing like an actual Apex Legends lore deep dive? Due to his showman-like personality, he's practically become the poster boy of Apex. Yeah, he's basically the narrator for like every single event. Overconfident jackass who constantly gloats about how he's the best. Yet he constantly has this awkward air about him where it feels like he's forcing it. This character trope falls pretty firmly with the overconfident loser. Someone who yeah. wants everyone else to- Nobody fucks like Gaston, no one cucks like Gaston. No one real sneak goes girlfriend like Gaston. To believe the great, when they themselves don't believe it. Usually depicted as narcissists. <laughs> yeah! He wouldn't be blamed for painting Mirage in this light as he literally- No, because if you actually watch all of the cutscenes with Mirage, he kind of does seem like the loser in most of them. He creates clones of himself, which he admires and uses- <laughs> He does! Oh god, the weird self cessed porn shit for Mirage is kind of wild too. Listen. Listen, I'm only into the Apex Legends porn for Wraith. What can I say? What can I say? I'm an edgelord. To toy with his goth waifu? Okay. Opponents. And while this is true, he's showy, he's overconfident, yet deep down he's a loser, the reason he's like this isn't because he has an ego. His what? hologram technology was created by his mother. What? The entire reason- I never went into the actual lore. I've played so many hours of Mirage and Apex. I have never gone into the lore. I always looked at him as like the goofball. What? He can compete is because of her. His mother has dementia. Her association between Mirage as a person and her son are fading rapidly. That's, Mirage's that's participation in the games are as a thank you to his mother to show how far it's gotten him. But it's Bro. also for her to notice him. She's referenced that she follows Mirage's endeavors in the Apex games. He's celebrating his second anniversary of competing in the games. Oh so God. to get his mother to notice him, despite her deteriorating mind, he tries to have the biggest personality possible oh he tries to be God, as memorable no as way. possible he wants his mother to see him even in moments where he tries to have a heart to heart with her he has to fall back on being his big personality so she can remember him bro what the frick that's just so sad what ain't no way yeah yeah that's right mom one sec yeah I'm, I'm your son elliot we are inside oh yeah, yeah, man no, no worries i'll win for you today always for my number one fan He's not a confident person. He's even somewhat incompetent. His Bro. boisterousness, his loudness. That's so can get sad. The How did I not know this? Those around him's nerves. But he isn't like this for them. He isn't like this for the audience. He just wants to be noticed by his dying mother. Mirage perfectly represents how you can subvert the comic relief character trope. Intention. That's crazy. Oh my god. Bro, I didn't know that at all.
instantly, your rotted brain played a million memes and one name to echo in your mind. Set there is a phenomenon where when something gets very popular, some people are like, yeah, I would like it, but so many people on the internet oh, talk man, about it, I hate so that I won't. Brain. My usual response I to this sentiment is, that. the police won't find your body. However, this may be one of the only cases where the internet has completely destroyed an otherwise amazing character. You see, honestly, I think that that is part of why the character is so amazing. I'm pretty sure I made a video about this like years ago on my main channel about how the fact that Sans became a meme where you cannot think of Sans seriously despite being such a serious character perfectly fits into his character of not taking him seriously. I think the fact that it became such a, a goofy meme that you don't see him as a serious character, it fits into the persona that he baked into himself like holding whoopee cushions in his hands for the entire game. Your perspective on this funny bone boy is completely warped. It is not at all what he's actually like. So before we can discuss, let us take a moment to sit and meditate. Completely wash away all your cognitions of Sans Undertale. There are no AUs. The yeah, Sans parody no, song- No, none of the parody stuff. ...is not real. It was just from Steven Universe. Rule 34 does not exist. That's not true. I, I'm- that is- that is a lie. It's all out? Hey, hey! I see that one. Trying to sneak one by me, you sexy son of a bitch. Now. That's me. Sans. Brother of Papyrus. Sans throughout most people's playthroughs of Undertale is just a funny guy. He's just a, a guy. He just shows up everywhere. He walks out of the screen on the left and appears on the right. Silly goober. While Papyrus is mostly accidentally funny while trying to be serious, Sans plays jokes, says one-liners, and gets up to all- Hey, hide behind this conveniently human-shaped lamp. Ha <laughs> ho! I'm just a funny guy. All kinds of funny hijinks. He is quite an endearing character, but over the course of the game he has small serious moments with you your dynamic with sans is perfectly demonstrated in his first scene he stalks you through a forest slowly closing in oh god anxiety oh lord races. what's happening oh then god finally, oh he no you. oh god Got him. Sans was the first D's nuts joke. You silly guy. <laughs> you silly, silly what a goofball. What a, Why what a funny is goober. Why dichotomy of goober and knows your IP address in regards to Sans? What the internet may have taught you is that Sans is actually a deeply sad and edgy character who's punished and has to hold in the pain and cries when he's alone. No, stop it. You have been brainwashed. Uh, brainwashed by the alternate univoices. In Undertale, the act of saving and reloading is canon. Yeah. Only a select few characters understand this. These include Flowey, Kara, and Sans. Sans fully understands you have the power to reload whenever yeah, you- but here's the difference between Kara and Flowey. They have determination, so they're able to actually save and load. The fact that Sans is aware of all of it is what makes Sans so terrifying. And I do think Sans is cripplingly- incredibly, unfathomably depressed as a character. I, I don't think he's sitting alone crying, saying that he misses his wife in every uh, panel or whatever, but he is, he knows about the saving and loading function, and he also knows that it, he will eventually be defeated. The reason why he's such a good character is because he knows you're gonna just save, and every time he beats you, you're just gonna get back up again and load your file and face him again while he has to live out an eternity fi facing you where he stays the same and you learn his movements every single time and every single playthrough. And even though you're doing the right thing and you're saving people, he knows that in an alternate timeline and an ultimate save file, you actually did play a genocide route. He is fighting you, hoping that he could stop you so that you could reload the game so that you could revive all of his friends that you've murdered. And he knows that ultimately you will overcome him you want which means he knows you are the most dangerous creature to ever enter the underground yes, you sir. have the power to save everyone or destroy them <laughs> and sans doesn't want you to you know, the explosion effect was was the the reference to ex destroying them to kill everyone because those are his buddies so how does sans achieve this goal to stop you on doing a murderous rampage well manipulation he sets out to manipulate you as a player. His yes, strongest sir. tools were never his bones, lasers, or bad puns. It was his ability to manipulate you as a player. Telling you jokes and highlighting the silliness of other characters to endear you to the world of Undertale. And he does a damn good job of it. He plays Bro. the comic relief role amazingly. 
He wants you to feel bad for hurting any of the denizens of Undertale. Which what? I guess it's not exactly manipulation. You are killing his friends, I guess. But like, I do see what he's saying. That's a good, that's a very good take. I like that take. Which goes into what he does next, judgment. There is a very famous- Oh God, this judgment hall over here. Scene in the halls of judgment. Uh, this scene is the, the greatest scene. Where he does a judgment. For every level of violence you gain, for every execution point, he judges you. But this isn't the only time he judges you. The next is right after you finish a normal playthrough, where he lets you know how the underground is doing after you left it in ruin. At first, it may seem he's doing this because he's your good friend catching up with you despite your hiccups. No, the reason why he tells you that the world is like, it's okay, but it could have been better if you wouldn't have been around is so that you could reload the file and actually save everyone. Literally such a terrifying character. But the real reason is he knows you can reset. He manipulates you with judgment, showing that you've left the world imperfect, enticing you to try again. And you know what? Bro, Most what a players cool do. Usually Sans wins. You save the gun underground, let them all live happily, and put down the game. Sans in these playthroughs doesn't have any animosity towards you. But there's still a chance. Oh. You might try oh. again, and out of curiosity, Bro. kill everyone. He picks up too late. It's crazy. It's so crazy. Your state of mind in your next playthrough. Just barely getting in a threat of his intentions to stop you by any means necessary. Just before you murder his brother. He tries to look for any final bit of goodness oh in you, for any reason to he turn you so away hard. from his path, scrambling for a single excuse. If you accidentally leave one enemy alive, if you take an extra turn to kill Mediton, that'll be enough. He still wants to spare you. He wants you to oh feel disappointment. God. And that this path meant nothing. And why do you kill my brother? Catch. But if you actually do everything, if you do kill every single character, he will face you eternally in a brutally grueling hard boss fight. You want a technicality so you get frustrated and don't try this again. Because then his brother might be able to live happily again. But as you approach him, with hands covered in the dust of countless monsters, wielding a knife that could kill Sans in one go. Sans' final struggle begins. Bro, what an insane fight every single time. You see, despite the notoriety of this fight- Bro, first of all, this fight's terrifying, but you're fighting against literally the good guy. But what's even crazier is you fight him monotonously for hours and hours and hours, times and times again just fighting him and fighting him and fighting him. And eventually you totally forget that he is literally the good guy and you are the villain. And you finally beat him, you finally cheer, and then you realize, oh, what did I just do? As being the hardest in Undertale, in the canon of the universe, Sans is at a severe disadvantage. You can because try- Because he knows you can try as many times as you want. You will memorize all of his attacks. You are inevitable. As many times as you please, all it takes is one hit to kill Sans. And Sans fully knows this, but then why does he fight? Because he's trying to hit you in the one- He wants you to feel bad. He is fighting against the player, not the character you're playing as. Thing you've been told to rely on, your determination. He wants to kill you, shit talk you, whittle you down with frustration or boredom yeah. until you throw up your hands and reset or leave. What I dislike about the internet's portrayal of this fight is how it shows it as this badass or terrifying moment. This fight isn't him using overwhelming power. It's him well, trying to too, manipulate you. Uh -huh. that, that's why it goes two ways. It's his overwhelming power that he knows, he knows will not last forever. He knows when his power will eventually be overcome when you learn all of his moves and all of his strategies and you eventually learn all of his techniques and you're able to dodge through them easily, no problemo. Bro, I remember when I first fought him the first time, I died on the literal first, the literal first attack beat me. And it's because I've tried again and again and again and again and again that I eventually was able to overcome him. And that's what it's all about. About. The mockery after you die, the trolling, the unfairness of the fight. Sans is not a badass. He isn't a scary monster in the darkness. He's a comedian and a manipulator. At the end of the fight, he just takes his turn for the rest of time, never giving you the opportunity to attack. The only thing that makes him lose is him sleeping. After everything he's tried, after shouldering the burden of manipulating a near god of this world, out. even he, the man who would fight to the bitter end. And you literally have to cheat to beat him. Would get tired. I think deep down he knows that this ends in Kara's control. 
that even if a pacifist route is achieved, Kara will still cause untold suffering. On your save, there will be no happy world to strive for. Worst part is, on a reset, the new Sans won't even know that his attempts at manipulating you will be for naught. With his final breath, he doesn't curse you, he doesn't cry. There's no use in wasting it on that after all. It's over. He just heads to his favourite bar and talks to his brother one more and dies last time. Sans perfectly represents how you can subvert the comic relief character trope. Honestly. Manipulation. Bro is so scary. I'm telling you, Sans is literally my favorite video game character of all time. Uh, there, there's a reason why I'm such a nerd and get such a hard on. Such a boner. The funny guy. The one we ha ha at. The one who we go, what a kooky and silly character that ensues the greatest of hilarities. True. Yet because you, the fool, the absolute buffoon, That's me. were too busy giggling, you couldn't see what hides beneath the silly. You may initially write off a goofy lad, since how threatening could a chuckle inducing creature be? And when you look down on them, the animosity in them builds up. You may be pretty girl now and me nerd, but in the future me going to yes. be rich man and you yes. forget it. The so real and true. Take that, oppressed lower class. The guy may be silly, not for the sake of silly, Got but for personal turmoils. Either to hide their pain through Snickers, or to be noticed by those they hold dear. The silly Damn. bloke may even be using the giggles to get you to do what they want. I hate this script. Can I just say, his intro was so good, but I am so just frustrated listening to his descriptions of everything now. Obviously, that's the point, but yeah. Not. After all, when you're in a good mood, you're a much more susceptible target. You don't sell snake oil without a good routine. All of this is to say, be careful of silly guys, because they may be no joke. If only you had listened to this advice sooner. Oh no! Greetings. I am Rad Chad, the Mad Lad. No! And to some of you, you're dead. Oh, and I wait, what? Of course, a gas leak in the room you're in. Wow, he's he's betrayed all of us. Tried to stop all 50 ticking time bombs on time before Gotham City explodes. You underestimated me, you absolute buffoon. Damn. You Tom fool. You have hallucinated this entire video. It never happened. You are it was all to lull us into a false sense of security. Crazy. That was not a plate of pasta you ate. That was a monkey. Silly monkey. You got Whoa. us. <laughs> Look at the monkey. Look at the monkey. He He's so goofy. I like this rat chat. He's just so goofy. Oh, oh, oh. Ah, ah. Oh, monkey. Oh, it's a monkey. Yes. Mon let's Woo. go. Yeah, monkey. Let's go, monkey. Oh, he's a good little oh. monkey. Oh, I like how monkeys do monkey things. Yeah, monkey. Fucking crazy. What the fuck? I love monkeys. They're so funny and goofy. Ha <laughs> ha, goofy. Anyway, um, I will not let your dad see you unless you subscribe. Bye-bye. Like, subscribe, and follow me on Twitch. Stay weird, fam.